Hi, I'm Toby Lipinski for the Fisherman Magazine, and today I'm going to be showing you how to tie what's known as the power snell. Uh, this is used generally with circle hooks. It was developed by the offshore tuna fishermen when they wanted to use very large circle hooks, but they had to drop down to extremely light leaders. And what they were running into was a problem of that little gap. When the eye of the hook comes around, no matter how tight that is crushed together, there's still a little bit of a gap and it produces a rough edge. So what they found was that the leader for when it was snelled would eventually slide down in, potentially cut off after a lengthy battle. So what they came up was with the power snell, which incorporates a pair of wraps through the eye of the hook, one acting as a cushion. Therefore, the weight bearing or load bearing line coming into your eye never runs into that little gap, therefore uh, increasing your opportunity or your chances of landing fish. Well, I've discovered this knot and started using it circle hooks when I was fishing for striped bass with uh, chunks of menhaden as well as for live eels. And in case you're not aware yet, Already enacted for 2020 in Massachusetts waters for private anglers, shore and private boat, is requirement to use inline non-offset circle hooks when you're using bait. It does not apply to commercial anglers or for hires at this time. And then the remaining Atlantic states uh, actually have this going out for public comment this fall as part of the public hearings which are going to affect the 2020 going and going forward striped bass regulations. So there already is a requirement in Massachusetts next year and a good chance that other states will enact similar uh, requirements for using live bait for striped bass. And if nothing else, it's simply a better choice for the fish to use a circle hook. And honestly, since I started using circle hooks, I can say with complete certainty that I have a better hookup ratio than with J hooks. I have far fewer deep hooked fish and I land more fish that I hook. As you'll see when I show you how to tie this knot, as there's multiple benefits in the end. So again, you gotta start off with that circle hook, inline, non-offset, Let's jump into the how-to and see just how it's done. Okay, so here's how we tie the power snell. In this case, I'm going to be using a 6 aught Gamagatsu inline octopus circle SE4X strong. This is the hook that I've been using this year for live eels in preparation or anticipation there of the circle hook requirements for bait and striped bass. It's already been implemented for 2020 in Massachusetts and is going out to public uh, hearings this fall for the rest of the coast. So there's a good chance that everyone's going to be required. So you know what? Makes sense right now to A, learn how to tie the right knots to use with the circle hooks and B, to acquaint yourself with how circle hooks are used for live bait. So here we go. We're going to tie up a uh, quick little not. In this case, we're using yellow fly line backing just because it shows up a little better on the video. Obviously, in the real world scenario, I'd be using either monofilament or uh, fluorocarbon leader material. So, all right, you start off, we've got inline circle, we've got a straight eye, non offset. Start by taking your, your leader material, running it up through the eye. You're going to then circle back around and come through the eye a second time. Now what you want to do here, when it comes through, is make sure that the tag end lays on the side of the hook where the gap is in the eye. So in this case it's on that side, so I've got my tag end running on that side as well, which I'll show you why at the end of the video. So then we take our loop and we're going to run it anywhere from five to seven times around the eye of the or the shank of the hook. Make sure we also include the tag line, um, five to seven, depending on the he the how heavy your line is. Just two, three. Each of those wraps goes towards the back side of the hook. Four, five, six, and we'll do seven on this one. What I then like to do is reposition that tag on the top of the hook, pull the main line through. Once you get that loop form, I bring in a set of pliers, grab that on one end, pull it all tight, and it locks in. Now what this has done is you've got your line coming up. 
you've got that tag end forming a cushion or a barrier of sorts between the gap in that eye. No matter how tight these hooks are, unless they're soldered, there remains a gap and a bit of a sharp edge. So as a fish is, is on there and fighting, especially with lighter lines and larger, heavier circle hooks, you have a larger gap and a sharper edge. So you run the risk of wearing through the leader and eventually cutting off. So by doing this, this tag end produces a cushion. The second aspect of this knot, which provides such a benefit with these circle hooks, let me just clip off the tag here, is that when the hook is coming through the eye, you produce a bit of pull, torque, whatever it is, on this side so it pulls the hook down. As you pull that hook, as the line goes that way, it naturally, with the line coming through the eye like that, wants to pull the hook and rotate it in this manner. What that does is, A, on the initial hook set, much easier to get hooked into the fish's mouth, and second, when you're fighting a fish, it's always pulling the hook eye down, which then comes around and pushes that point in at this direction. So you will lose far fewer fish than other style circle hooks with a bent eye and way fewer fish than you would with a standard J hook. And the benefit obviously is that 99.9% .9 of the time, the fish is going to be hooked in the corner of the mouth, so it's much better for the fish with the current issues that we have going on with release mortality. That is always something that should be taken into consideration. So again, this is how you tie up the power snell. Uh, and again, 2020, Massachusetts has already implemented mandatory circle hooks when using bait for striped bass, and there's a good chance that other Atlantic Coast states will also initiate similar regulations in 2020.